speak with you about um, pressures on families. So I'm asking you to come back into a very nitty gritty realistic present and think about your household, your family, and when we say family, uh, that might be um, family that are not under the same roof with you, but you, know, you definitely feel a network and connected connection with them. One of my kids is in Portland and one is in Minneapolis, but I don't think the level of connection is any different. So for me, family extends out to those households. And right now we're going to show this family right in the middle here. This is our little household and family, even if several different groups might be involved, as my case, if my kids grow and move out. And I want you to think about the pressures. What's, what's zooming in and zooming in on, on, on people you care about here? I'm drawing the eyes first because I'm assuming your family uh, has, has some pressures. I know mine does. And I want you to help me think about what those arrows are. And anybody can just call out. I'll try to both talk and scribe. We'll see how this goes. Financial. Okay, there are financial pressures. And what are some examples of them? Debt. Debt. Uh -huh. <laughs> Unemployment. Unemployment. Trying to save for retirement. Okay. Lots of financial Health insurance. <laughs> Somebody behind you said health insurance. Health insurance. Health insurance. Health insurance. Have a lot of health issues, I imagine, including insurance. I'll just add access to care. And um, on your debt, particularly, this is true for one of my kids, especially, because mm -hmm. dang student loans, you know, crippling, can be crippling. Um, what else? What else are, is, is pressuring in on the people you care about? A new job. Okay. So unemployment, retirement, but if you've got a new job, how do you make that a new job and a new career mm -hmm. for a young person who makes her first adult okay. job? So this can be a first brand new job. <coughs> or for me, about uh, 10 years ago, I changed jobs and fields completely in my early 50s. Well, that was a big turnover. <laughs> <laughs> What other pressures? Lack of support system. Okay, so lack of support. Could I also write isolation? Yeah. Does that match? Yeah. Time. Post-traumatic stress. Dealing with addiction. Peer pressure. Want to stay with that one a while, the children or yeah. <laughs> kids? Yeah. Um, yeah. Raising them. And when I say kids here, that's not really that doesn't do justice to what was said. But I was at the top of the page. But it's like raising them, nurturing them, tending them, pushing them, shoving them. How do you get it all to work and get them to be in a healthy place so that? they can expand and have their own household. Well, all the pressures on kids. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. So we have to try to mediate as parents. So we have kids in here with their own pressures and just a handful of them. Don't get them all down, but what do you know from your experience? Oh my gosh. I mean, just the, the media influence. And it's not even coming from my household. <laughs> all the, right? I mean, we don't get strictly limit access. But it's just the constant barrage of expectation of, uh, of purchasing and uh, video gaming and interacting with media. It's just, that's, the, that's, that's what social life is. 20 years ago, I thought, okay, I'm going to protect my daughter, as she was then. To, uh, we're not going to play into this Barbie thing. There's enough oh, else yeah. not to have Barbie dolls in the house. But as soon as she started school, which was at three in a Montessori program, and of course the whole Montessori culture, they're not dealing with, uh, they couldn't even wear t-shirts with advertisements or popular things. 
But what did they play at recess, and what did she come home learning how to play at three and four? Barbies. <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Isolation just is impossible. Not play with guns. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of pressures up here. Anybody want to add to the list? I know it's not exhaustive. Can you stand aside so we can see? What, what's that? Did you say? Oh, sorry. Your pressure. She had one over here. All right, and you mentioned. So I'll put um, grandparents among the generations here. So there's the age that are parents or could be parents, not necessarily. If they're parents, they're kids. We all have our own parents, and we're blessed sometimes to be close to them and work with them, but. As they get older, it gets harder and harder to know what to do. Um, did I forget anything else? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm very good here was health crisis. Okay, so there's a health crisis. There's insurance, access, and when you, who said crisis, what were you thinking of? I was thinking of my brother's girlfriend who is uh, devoting her to career to climate change but in, lives in New York but didn't go to the march yesterday because she's working, she's in school, and she has multiple sclerosis. So we're finding illness, devastating illness is how we juggle. Um, I have two friends who live in Boston. One I knew as a grad student, and she sent me a birthday card not long ago, three months late. She said, I know you'll forgive me because she had been um, completely consumed by chemo and radiation with a very aggressive form of breast cancer, which she's just told me about. My other friend I knew is a postdoc. She has also a different gene but a very aggressive breast cancer and has beaten it back twice. But for both of these women, um, the return is inevitable. I don't even know what to say or do. All I can do is put them together and them. Maybe get them together because they don't know each other. And they both feel very isolated. Yeah. I guess then one that I want to add to like health time mortality. I, mm -hmm. I feel a lot of people would live a lot differently if we could live forever. Um, <laughs> 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 Yeah, that puts pressure on people more than is realized. I'm going to mentally put a picture over here on your help. So we've got some big themes here. Rhonda? Yes? I would add even broken relationships. Oh. Oh, that's just easy to doubt with, isn't it? Yes. Of course, my, my, my son is divorced. That's heartbreaking to me. It's hard on my grandchildren. So it, it, <coughs> these households are not some perfect of unity, right? There's many cracks and fractures within those relationships that we're feeling pressure. Can I just add one last one? Oh, sure. The pressure to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> just be happy. <laughs> I don't, but I'm going to stop. Because of several reasons. The page is getting polluted. <laughs> this, this space is full, and I know that I have a, a guy breathing down my neck with the shut up and So I'll, I'll leave you with one bridge here. These are hard. Let's just imagine the time when climate change has become so drastic. Then how are these pressures going to be? If we have put humanity in such stress from lack of food, um, stressful climate, uh, complete rebellion of the disintegration of society as populations are crowded together, um, then how are these pressures going to be? They're pretty bad now. But what happens when we cross that line? Where is that line? And ultimately, we are working to build capacity. <coughs> we don't want to cross the line. So tell us about that.